welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for this DonorBox hosted webinar with the Giving Block to talk about crypto and stock giving. My name is Jenna and I am the nonprofit advocate here at DonorBox. Now, this isn't just a one-way conversation today. We want to hear from you too. This is so important to us. So please feel free to ask any questions you may have throughout the presentation in the chat box. And we will be busy behind the scenes marking those questions so that we can answer them during our Q&A segment at the end. And we also have Amy from the DonorBox team in the chat today um, that can also help out. So everyone say hi to Amy. And as always, yes, you will be receiving the recording and the links to all the awesome resources we mentioned today via email in just a few days. So please keep an eye out for that. Now, before we begin, let me go ahead and introduce DonorBox. So DonorBox provides an affordable, easy to use and powerful fundraising solution that enables quick and easy fundraising for you while you build meaningful and lasting relationships with your supporters. From our attractive donation forms to our robust donor management capabilities that in powerful, meaningful relationships between you and your supporters, DonorBox works with and for you as you establish, scale, and sustain your nonprofit, meeting your needs at every single stage of growth. So you can learn more about us at DonorBox.org. And now I am so pleased to introduce The Giving Block. The Giving Block, a shift for company, is the platform helping nonprofits fundraise non-cash assets more effectively. Pioneers of the crypto philanthropy movement, The Giving Block developed the leading solutions for cryptocurrency donations, taking crypto and NFT donations mainstream in the nonprofit sector. The Giving Block's team then developed a stock giving experience built to empower even more donors to give non-cash assets. The Giving Block's product suite empowers nonprofits to grow their asset revenue and today, thousands of nonprofits are using the Giving Block to raise funds from modern philanthropists. So everyone, welcome our special guests today. And that brings us to an exciting new integration with DonorBox and the Giving Block. Combining two of the industry's top fundraising tools makes collecting non-cash donations easy for you and your donors. This innovative integration enables you to accept crypto and stock donations via the powerful DonorBox online giving form. So later in this presentation, we'll dive more into this integration and how you can use it to expand your giving options and bring in more donors. Now, let's meet our presenters for the day. First, we have Zark from the DonorBox team. He is our product manager at DonorBox, and his main area of focus is CRM and integrations. He has over eight years of experience working with different platforms and totally understands the needs of nonprofits when it comes to fundraising and donor, relation, donor relationship management systems. So welcome, Zark. Thanks for being here with us today. And now let's welcome our special guest, Alex Wilson, the co-founder of The Giving Block, again, a shift for company. Alex's expertise in non-cash giving, including crypto philanthropy, has been featured in Forbes, USA Today, Bloomberg, and has earned him recognition in Forbes 30 Under 30 for social impact. So welcome, Alex. Thanks yeah. for being hey guys, here. Thanks for having me today. I'm excited to talk a bit more about crypto and stock donations and the awesome integration we've built. We're really excited to have you. Now, let me show folks the agenda here. So here's our agenda. I'm going to pass it over to Alex in just a second. And be sure to stick around till the end because we have a great exclusive resource just for you for attending this webinar. So uh, again, we will do a Q&A and then we'll hand out that resource. All right, without further ado, Alex, I will awesome. pass it over to you. Thank you guys. 
All right, so I'll try to keep this um, relatively concise within, you know, 15, 20 minutes so that we've got plenty of time for questions at the end. We tend to, to get a lot and, and don't hold back your questions at all. Feel free to drop them in throughout um, and we'll, we'll address as many as we can at the end. Um, so let me jump right into it. First, we're going to start with a poll. Um, and the question is, do you currently accept any non-cash assets? And this, when we say non-cash, we're primarily talking about crypto, stock. Um, that's really the focus of this. All right. I think we've got the, the majority in at least, about two-thirds answered. So final was uh, 31%. 11 people said, yes, we do. And 25 or 69% said, no, we do not. Um, and I'd say that's pretty typical to what we see. I think over time, we're certainly seeing more and more nonprofits accepting non-cash. Uh, a big driver of that has been that it's just gotten easier and easier to do. It used to be really hard to take non-cash gifts. So often it was just larger nonprofits that were taking non-cash, you know, five, 10 years ago. But as it gets easier, we're seeing all shapes and sizes of nonprofits begin taking on cash and really use that to grow their revenue streams. So let me get into the presentation about crypto and stock donations. Um, we'll start with sort of the basics. Um, we're not going to get anything too complex, but really making the case for why nonprofits should be thinking about crypto and stock donations, who the donors are, um, and, and the basics about this donor demographic. So first question we always get <laughs> is why should nonprofits be accepting crypto and stock donations? Um, the bottom line is if you're not accepting these, you're essentially leaving money on the table and missing out in really important ways that donors can support you. Um, nonprofits that accept more donation methods are, of course, going to be more accommodating to donors and make it easier for them to give. Um, we're finding that nonprofits that accept non-cash gifts are growing more quickly um, because they're able to receive more gifts, right? It's if you're limiting the donors and the way they can give, both the donor demographic and the way they give, you're, of course, fundraising from a smaller pool of donors. So if you open that up, you're able to grow faster and as a result, of course, grow bigger. Um, and I think people really tend to underestimate how much of wealth in the U.S. in particular is held in assets, right? Most uh, large donors and wealthy donors have most of their money stored in assets. It's not just all sitting in cash in a bank account, right? So they're not making very frequent, let's say, $100,000 credit card gifts, um, but it's much easier for them to make a large gift of crypto or stock because that's where they're storing most of their net worth. Um, and the stat here that's really important, the, the bottom middle of the slide under Grow Bigger is 98% of wealth is held in non-cash assets. So that's the reason why it's so important to be able to tap into this because if you're not taking non-cash, you're focusing on a really small portion of the kind of disposable income or disposable assets of donors. Um, and it's really making it easier for donors too, right? So not only are you able to, to fundraise more, but you're also making the donors life a bit easier. And we'll get into some of the more specifics, um, but it, it really, in this day and age, as it's gotten easier to take crypto stock and other non-cash gifts is really crucial part of any fundraising strategy, especially if you wanna start going after some of these bigger gifts. So here's a quick rundown. Um, of how to kind of think about what these numbers actually mean for crypto and stock donations. So I think people, you know, I mentioned how much wealth is stored in non-cash assets, but what does that market actually look like? And I think it tends to be much bigger than people think, right? So even crypto, which, you know, much newer than stocks, um, is a $1 trillion market. That's a huge market to be able to access. And even just in the U.S., 60 million people have crypto. Right. So imagine a $60 million sort of donor population um, that has assets that they can't give to you unless you're able to accept crypto. Um, last year alone, which was a relatively slower year for crypto, $69 million just in crypto on our platform was donated, um, which I think is much more than people expect. And the average gift size tends to be pretty big. So it's about six and a half thousand. We see that kind of fluctuate between five and 10,000, depending on the year. But the takeaway is, the gifts tend to be pretty large. So even if you're just getting a couple of crypto donors every year, um, that can make a huge, huge difference, especially for smaller and mid-sized nonprofits. For stocks, I think this is probably less surprising, huge market, right? Even bigger, $46 trillion market. 
with more than twice as many users as crypto, 145 million people, nearly half the country in the U.S. own stocks. Um, in 22, um, so last year's estimated that about $100, $100 billion was donated um, to charities. What's interesting with stocks and, and to a degree crypto too is, I mean, the average gift size, very similar range, five to $10,000 that we're seeing. But for a long time, because crypto and stock used to be more difficult to accept, a lot of it went to DAFs um, because DAFs like Fidelity Charitable and Schwab were the only ones who were set up or knew how to accept these assets. Now that there's a lot of new tools out there and it's been a lot easier for nonprofits to accept those gifts directly, it's, it's allowing donors to directly donate to the causes and of course gives a nonprofit the funds more quickly. So in essence, you're in some ways disintermediating the DAF and getting those funds directly from the donor, um, which is really great to see more and more nonprofits taking advantage of that. Then a little bit about the donor demographics. Um, so this is a really hot topic, right? Like who are these donors? Um, because we often hear from nonprofits that, well, we're not sure if we have any donors that have crypto or stock. And it's like, well, if, if you're not offering that as a giving method, you probably wouldn't know because they're probably going somewhere else that does accept that, right? So we're always saying, if you're not on the menu, you can't really be chosen very easily because most donors aren't gonna reach out and ask you. Um, and especially when we say, you know, with crypto in particular, right, a lot of the donors tend to be on the younger side, a lot of millennials and Gen Z. So a lot of nonprofits are actually using crypto and stock donations as a way to engage net new donors and younger donors too. Um, even when it is existing donors, right, that's certainly a big part of this, they're often able to give more because of the tax benefits of donating stock or crypto. When you see these big headlines of, of Jeff Bezos or Bill Gates or Warren Buffett making huge donations, it's almost always in stock, right? They're not doing a wire transfer, or writing a check or using their credit card. They're donating stock um, from their investment portfolio because it's so much more tax efficient to give. And I think on one of these later slides, we have some more um, examples of that. But all that to say that when you accept crypto and stock, it does touch all the different demographics and you'd be pleasantly surprised by how many of your existing donors have these assets and would actually prefer to give them if you just gave them an easy way to make those gifts instead. Um, because the gifts are happening, um, but sometimes they're going to adapt instead of directly to your nonprofit because the nonprofit isn't set up with the way to accept these gifts directly. So drilling down a bit on young donors in particular, since this is something that comes up almost on every call we have with a nonprofit that's, you know, they're saying our donors are aging, we need more young donors, we wanna connect with the younger donors. Um, how do we find them, right? How do we fundraise from them? I mean, what we're finding is a lot of these younger donors, right, especially millennials, especially wealthier millennials, a lot of their wealth, not surprisingly, is stored in, in crypto and stocks. Um, in some years, they might prefer to donate crypto, and another year, they might prefer to donate stock, depending on how their investments did that year. But it's all about what's appreciated the most, because if crypto is a good year, it might be more tax efficient for them to give crypto. If stocks had a really good year, it might be better for them to give stock that year. So it's not really one or the other. It's often that they have both. And depending on the year, they might prefer to give one asset class over the other. Um, and you know, people that are opening new accounts to buy stocks, to buy crypto, they tend to actually be under 35. Um, so it's a really great opportunity to start building these relationships with donors early. And there's even um, some really interesting research that's been done from Fidelity and CNBC that found that 90% plus of millennial millionaires own crypto. So for young people in particular, this is their kind of preferred way to store wealth, to invest. Um, so the way they invest and the way they store their wealth is a little different than prior generations. So it's important to be, you know, building these relationships early on with these, with these donors. And then there was some great research done by Fidelity where they found some even more detailed numbers around who these donors are. Um, so on average, they actually interestingly found that crypto donors uh, are 45% more generous than non-crypto donors. Um, and part of that is because crypto has appreciated so, so much. Crypto has been the best performing asset in both the last five and 10 year period, um, despite its volatility. So in a long time frame, crypto has performed incredibly well. And people that have crypto have generally done very, very well year over year. Sure, you hear a lot about the volatility and the ups and downs, but overall, they've certainly done very well. And they tend to be on the younger side. A lot of people in their 30s, even 20s own crypto. And on average, they tend to be wealthy. 
So average income of a crypto user is about $111,000 a year, which you know is more than double the average for someone in the US. So they do tend to be wealthier, which is of course great to build those relationships with those wealthier donors. Um, and we're seeing gift sizes on average around $10,000, um, which is really amazing. So then a bit more from the donor perspective. So why do donors give crypto and stock? We often hear from nonprofits, well, you know, okay, if these donors have so much stock in crypto, why don't they sell those investments and just give us the cash, right? It's a, it's a little bit more complicated than that. Um, and one part is just the, the kind of convenience and the ease of being able to donate the assets without having to sell them, wait for the cash and transfer it over. If they can just donate those assets they already have directly, it's it's definitely more efficient for them, makes their life easier. Um, it's going to mean you also get more money um, because one of the biggest pieces of this is the tax incentive that the IRS has created around donating property and non-cash assets. Um, so it's just a smarter way for them to give and allows them to give much bigger. And we'll have a sort of a real example on yep this slide of the tax efficiency of donating non-cash assets. So crypto and stock treated practically the same for tax purposes when you're donating it. When you're donating cash, just to run through the three different types, donors can write off that cash donation, um, but cash doesn't really appreciate, right? So there's no appreciation to write off. Um, there's no capital gains on tax because it's not changing in value, it's just cash. But with stocks and crypto, what's really unique is um, if the value of that crypto and stock goes up, um, not only can they write off the full amount of the gift and the value at the time they donated, but they can write off the appreciation as well. So they don't have to pay capital gains on the appreciation. They're donating the full, full amount um, rather than selling it, paying tax, and then donating the after-tax proceeds. Um, so when you give crypto and stock for the donor, it's typically meaning they can give about 30% more um, because they don't have to pay those taxes and they can get a higher deduction. And it's not just better for the donor, it's actually better for you as the nonprofit too, because you're getting a net larger amount because you're getting basically pre-tax dollars. You can almost think about it like contributing to your 401k where you can contribute pre-tax dollars from your income this would be the same as when you're donating non-cash assets where they're basically able to give pre-tax assets where they don't have to pay tax and you as a charity don't have to pay tax on the asset either. So depending on their specific situation, it could be a 30% difference, which of course is huge, especially on these larger gifts. Here's a quick example of, let's say someone wants to give a million dollars and two different ways this would work if they gave you the crypto directly or if they sold the crypto and then gave you cash. So let's say donor A gives you the crypto directly for the sake of the example, let's just say Bitcoin. They can, let's say they wanna give you a million dollars, they would give you that full million dollars. So you actually get a million dollars, they get a million dollar write off. You don't have to pay taxes on the million dollars of crypto. They don't have to pay taxes on the million dollars of crypto. It's a win-win for both sides. Everyone's better off for it. Um, I guess the only kind of loser in this situation is the IRS because they're not getting the tax money. Um, and then in scenario B, let's say you ask your donor to sell the crypto and give you the cash. Well, the donor probably isn't going to be willing to do that in the first place, but if they did, um, you know, they're going to pay capital gains tax on that. Um, we're going to use sort of a industry average here of, you know, let's call it 27% of the gift. And they're going to pay $276,000 in taxes, meaning you're only going to get $723,000 as a donation instead of a million dollars. And the donor can only write off $723,000. So you're both worse off by, in this example, about 27%. Um, so pretty dramatic difference. And this is why it's important. You know, you don't want to ask donors to sell their crypto and stock because it probably means they're going to go somewhere else. So it's really important that you can accommodate their direct donations in crypto and stock so that they're able to give you the full amount. And then kind of looking ahead a bit, um, you know, where is this all going? So one thing that we've noticed is donors, especially older donors, are actually pretty aware of the benefits of the tax benefits of donating non-cash, especially stocks. Um, and in return, they're starting to understand the crypto benefits of donating as well. It's the younger donors where we're spending a lot of time educating them on kind of general tax education of donating non-cash assets. 
because oftentimes it's the more experienced donors and the larger donors that know about the tax efficiency of donating non-cash. But a lot of these donors are making large non-cash gifts for the very first time, especially the ones who might be in their 20s and 30s. So it's really important to play a role in also educating donors on the best way they can give, right? Because it's really helping both parties in this. It's not just better for the donor, it's better for you as a charity too. So you can get the full amount of the gift. So it is important to do some basic, um, you know, kind of tax literacy or tax education with donors when you're talking to a donor, seeing what kind of ways they like to give, what kind of assets they have. Um, and especially when we think about this great wealth transfer, great wealth transfer, everyone's probably heard a million times by now. Um, you know, there's trillions of dollars being moved from older generations like baby boomers to millennials and Gen Z. And the majority of them are opting to invest in crypto. This is becoming way more popular among younger donors. So crypto donations are only going to become more and more sort of normalized and popular among nonprofits. And we're of course already seeing that play out year over year. More and more nonprofits are accepting crypto, more and more um, donors are giving in crypto. Um, and so roughly 10% of this wealth is predicted to go to charity while it switches hands. So of course not gonna happen in one year, but over let's say five, 10 years as this plays out, like a lot of these you know, transfers of wealth are gonna be transferred in the form of an asset, right? Not in the form of cash. Um, and the way they decide to keep those assets, donate them, invest them is gonna change pretty dramatically. It's important that nonprofits are keeping up with that. I won't repeat myself, but uh, you know, <laughs> takeaway is a lot of this money is being passed down. And then here's a couple last slides here. Um, in 2022, as a sort of relatively recent example, um, we saw donations jump up a lot. In the spring, when the war in Ukraine started, we saw millions of dollars, and even just crypto, getting donated to causes like Save the Children, Direct Relief, and all sorts of causes around the US of delivering aid and relief to Ukraine. Huge uptick. Um, you know, for Pride Month in June, we saw an increase in donations. So, you know, this isn't just an end of year thing. I mean, end of year is when we see the most crypto and stock and non-cash donations, but it's certainly year round, right? We have a campaign going right now, even for Maui, uh, where we're seeing crypto and stock get donated to orgs delivering aid there. So it is important that you think about this as a year round way to fundraise and you incorporate it into your existing fundraising plans, right? This isn't like a standalone thing you do. You want to incorporate this into your existing digital marketing plans and your existing fundraising plans. It should very much be integrated rather than kind of off on its own where no one's going to hear about it or see it. <laughs> um, and in 2023, uh, we're already seeing this right play out with the wildfires, with Syria and Turkey earthquakes. Um, people are continuing to be incredibly generous um, and we're expecting this year end to be one of the biggest ever. So um, lots of opportunities and you know, social impact and donating crypto and stocks is just becoming more and more common among younger generations. So this is my, uh, my last slide here before I hand it over. Um, one big thing we are noticing though with how nonprofits are fundraising these non-cash assets is the nonprofits who are actively fundraising um, non-cash, so crypto and stock, are definitely doing better than those who are not actively doing it, right? There's a big difference between nonprofits who just have a way to accept crypto and stock and those that actually try to fundraise crypto and stock, right? It's, do you have just the button to donate it or are you actually talking about it and telling your donors, hey, by the way, we now accept crypto and stock. And it's, I think it's much simpler to incorporate than most nonprofits think. It can be as easy as having a tweet once a month saying, hey, by the way, we now take crypto and stock or adding it to your existing newsletters to donors or your community saying, hey, by the way, did you know you can also give crypto or stock now? It can be that simple. Just mentioning it that you even have this option available. It doesn't have to change your entire fundraising plan or strategy or anything like that. It's very simple things like mentioning it on social media and newsletters that goes a really long way and makes a huge difference for how much you raise when it comes to non-cash. Because if you don't know anyone, right, like we said earlier, um, if you're not on the menu, right, they, they can't really give it to you. And if they don't know you're on the menu, uh, they probably won't even think to give it to your organization. So really important um, to talk about it and, and mention it to your donors and ask them about it. So 
With that, my piece is done and I'll pass it over to Zark to talk through the demo and how it all works. Well, thank you, Alex. And, uh, you know, amazing insights, which I feel are going to make a huge difference in the fundraising ecosystem in the upcoming years. Uh, so before I begin with the demo part of things to kind of show you, you know, how easy uh, it is and, uh, you know, how the overall uh, stock and crypto uh, donation process works, uh, just a quick reminder that as of now, uh, stock and crypto donations feature is only available for US-based orgs uh, that are on the pro or premium tiers uh, on DonorBox, right? And uh, as we move forward after the demo itself, Jenna will... Uh, kind of speak more about it as to how the pro and premium tiers work. So yeah, uh, before, uh, again, we get started, another quick reminder is that for enabling stock and crypto donations, uh, you know, uh, since it's only available for US-based orgs, as of now, uh, the EAN should be there for your org and your logo and address should be there. So these are the three, uh, you know, essential components that are kind of required for uh, enabling stock and crypto donations on your donor box donation form. And it's important, also important to note, uh, note that, you know, uh, stock and crypto uh, donations can be enabled for a campaign. So it's not like you have to enable them, you know, uh, or wide or on all your donor box campaigns. You have the control where you, you know, have to go to each campaign individually and enable them accordingly. And that kind of gives you the leverage to, you know, uh, Play out with your uh, donor box campaigns as uh, the need be. So yeah, uh, with that, uh, what we're going to do is in our demo today, uh, we'll just complete a stock donation followed by a crypto donation, and you know just to show you as to how things work. So let me just quickly start the demo. I think it should be visible to all now. Right, so as you can see that this is uh, in the My Plan section, this is a uh, premium org. Let's go to the campaigns section. We click the edit campaign sign in your donor box dashboard. And once in the campaign editor, we click the amounts uh, button link in there in the campaign editor. Once on, we're on there, on the left nav, uh, we scroll down till we see the stock and crypto section. <clears throat> now, as you can see, uh, stock and crypto is not enabled right now. And the reason for that, uh, without uh, for that, is that our EAN is missing. The address is there, the logo is there, but the EAN is missing. We can simply go to add organization info link and add our EAN right over there. Once we add the EAN, we can simply go back and I'll click the update and return to form editor button that we see at the top. Once we click that, we'll be taken back to our form editor. Let's scroll down again. And now we see there are no errors and we can easily go up uh, and enable the stock in crypto on this particular campaign. Let's click save and preview. Sounds good. So yep, our campaign is saved. Now let's go to the campaign page itself. Perfect. Let's refresh it once. Now you see that we have the standard donation as well as the crypto and stock donation. As soon as we click the next, a pop-up will appear. And that is where we transition from donor box to the TGB widget, uh, the giving block widget. We can see we have the crypto tab and the stock tabs in the widget itself. Let's go to the stock tab. You see we have a stock ticker symbol as well as stock name uh, drop downs. So we can essentially you know, pick uh, either one of those and it will populate this. The next one accordingly or we can pick the name and it will populate uh, the ticker accordingly let's add 100 shares of alcoa corporation and we'll click next after that then we just enter our personal information on the donation form just like we do you know for standard donations cash based donations all the information there we go <clears throat> Perfect, and we should be good to go. Let's click next. And it's now we can see as it's preparing a pledge. Now we just have to enter the broker name. If your broker firm is not present in there, you can also select, uh, you know, others. Let's enter their account number, their contact details, their email address. 
So before we, uh, you know, proceed with this, uh, just to give you guys a quick heads up. So what happens is that once you've added your broker details in there, uh, if you've selected one of the brokers that are already on Panan and with whom we have a direct integration, what happens is that once you complete the pledge, your corresponding broker will send out a form to you, uh, you know, in your email address, and then uh, you can fill that out, and that's how we'll uh, essentially proceed with that. And the same holds uh, true for in case of others, uh, you know, uh, you have to mention their details, and uh, you know, they'll send out the form, and we can proceed from that point onwards. Perfect, and that's about it. Once we've completed it, we have the transfer notice where we just have to uh, click the confirmation, provide our digital signature, let's do that, and we're good to go. Once we click continue, we've signed the pledge, and that's about it as far as the donation part of the stock donation is concerned. Let's start over uh, and try out uh, the crypto donation part too. Let's go to the crypto tab, we select the Ethereum tab, uh, you know, token. We select a small small quantity for our first donation. <laughs> Let's enter our personal information in there again. Uh, again, similar information that we entered for the stock donation. Once all the information is there, we just quickly click next. Now, at this point, uh, as you can see on this screen, uh, what's happening is that we have, uh, you know, a QR code uh, that you can uh, kind of uh, track with your wallet. Uh, if you're using your wallet on a mobile phone, you can, uh, you know, uh, scan your QR code uh, directly from your wallet app inside your mobile phone, or you can also copy uh, the corresponding code, like so this low code, if you're using it on the web, and then you open your corresponding wallet, which I do right now. And then we just have to click send. We select the token. And then we copy our hexadecimal address. And we have to enter the amount once again in our wallet. And all we have to do at, from this point onwards is click continue, uh, you know, in our wallet. Once we do that, we again have to send the confirmation. Once we send that, uh, that's about it. And the Ethereum has been crossword and that's how the crypto donation works. Uh, so now at this stage, once you know uh, it has just like stock donations, we create a pledge and it goes all the way over in case of uh, you know, crypto donations, what happens is once the transaction is confirmed on the blockchain itself, it essentially then, uh, you know, uh, that is when uh, you receive, the donor receives a receipt from the giving block and correspondingly, uh, shortly after that, the org also receives the corresponding donation receipt, uh, you know, from the donor box side that this uh, crypto donation has completed. Uh, inherently, uh, crypto donations are, you know, uh, kind of quicker than stock donations, which, which do take a few days to be completed. And yep, that's pretty much it. That's how simple uh, the integration is. Uh, we've seen how we can enable it, how we can do the stock donations, and how we can do the crypto donations. And with that, uh, over to you, Jenna. Thank you very much, Sark. Uh, that was a great demo. It's amazing to see how you can donate uh, in both ways. And that well, it took five minutes. So that really kind of takes that fear factor out, I think, for a lot of folks who are really eager to learn more. Um, for myself, who is still learning about non-cash assets, uh, it was really, really great to see how simple it can be. So thank you for that. Now, uh, I would like to introduce everyone to DonorBox's newest pricing tiers designed to help your organization as you grow. Uh, so our powerful pro and premium tiers have a lot to offer, including that important access to crypto and stock giving, which is not included in our standard plan. So in order to take advantage of this amazing integration, you do have to be a pro or premium user. So let's go ahead and take a look at how these tiers and their features can really benefit your organization. 
DonorBox Pro and Premium have several included features and tools to help you help others better, including a flat 1.5% platform fee across all products so that more of your donors' gifts go directly to your mission. This also includes exclusive add-ons and integrations like the donor box and the giving block integration that take your fundraising strategy to the next level. You also get access to advanced tracking and analytics, empowering you to make informed decisions based on those trends from your supporters. Plus premium orgs have access to guided onboarding, priority text support, and a fantastic fundraising coach to help you learn how to use DonorBox to its fullest extent and raise more funds. And so much more, there are many benefits to these plans. So the pro plan is available for just $139 a month. And DonorBox Premium Plans are designed based on your unique needs. We build this package just for you, complete with custom pricing. So to sign up for a premium demo, I'm gonna go ahead and launch a link now. You'll see that in the bottom left-hand corner of your screen. And you can also learn more about these pricing plans and I will launch our pricing link in just a moment. So there's a lot of incredible value here. Uh, one of the biggest being that stock in crypto integration with the giving block. So there is our demo link and I will go ahead and launch our pricing link as well so that you can look at those pricing plans a bit closer. Now, um, once I launch this one, the other link will go away. If you want that premium link, I'll go ahead and ask Amy to drop that in the chat for us. So there is our donor box pricing. Now, with that being said, everyone, I see a lot of questions and chat going on, which is great. This is what we want to see, which means that you are probably ready to diversify your donation sources and bring in more funds, right? I'm seeing a lot of excitement here. So you can activate the innovative donor box and the giving block integration today to start accepting crypto and stock donations right there in your online giving form. You saw how easy it was. Setting up is super simple. So you can go ahead and scan this QR code if you've got your phone within arm's reach like most of us usually do, or you can go ahead and follow the link that I am about to launch now. Now, this is a fantastic step-by-step -step guide that will walk you through the process um, from A to Z. So I will leave that up for just a moment. And then we will dive into Q&A. And don't forget, after Q&A, we have a special resource that we made just for you, hot off the press. So we'll give you just a couple seconds to click on that. And uh, I will go ahead and move over into our Q&A tab. Now, Amy, once I move into our Q&A tab, I will lose track of the chat. If you can go ahead and help me mark some of these questions. Now, Alex, I saw you were a busy bee and you were answering a lot of these in the chat already. So excuse me if I'm reading off things that we've already answered, but I think that we can um, go ahead and start from the top. I will read them out and uh, Zark and Alex, I will let you um, see who gets awesome. grabs first. You ready? Awesome, yep. a little bit of rapid fire here. <laughs> All right, so first one from the top from Ruben. Our nonprofit will operate in El Salvador, which is um, a legal tender for usage. Are the donation funds automatically exchanged to US dollars or can we receive crypto? Um, I think at this point, the integration is only gonna be available to organizations in the US. So um, at this point, we wouldn't be able to, to support that. And Zark, I saw a few questions in the chat to this effect. Um, in our pipeline, um, any plans, or for either of you, any plans to open up this integration to folks in other countries? I think I saw uh, Europe, Canada, um, and, and others as well. Yeah, I think we definitely do. And Alex can kind of add to that. Uh, but you know, the reason for that is that currently the payouts happen uh, through a donor advice fund. Uh, fund that is Renaissance charitable, and we have to send out checks, and those are only sent from inside US to the US based org. But yeah, 
and it can expand on that. Yeah, uh, work yeah for now it's, it's US at. only, um, but we certainly want to work with the DonorBox team to find some solutions to offer this internationally. Um, so over time, I'm sure we'll find a way to offer it to more and more countries as we keep building out the integration more thoroughly, but the US made the most sense as an initial place to launch. Yeah. Excellent. And of course, our amazing marketing team is always on top of updates for you guys for all of our integrations and in addition. So uh, rest assured that when we have any additions to this integration, you will be the first to know. And uh, you can subscribe to our newsletter if you haven't already. Um, Amy, if you could maybe dig up that link for us, we can drop that in the chat and make sure that you are um, in the know every step of the way. So thank you both for that. Um, now let's see. I'm not sure which ones you already answered, Alex. So I'm just going to read them down the list. So can you transfer crypto directly from an offshore broker? Yeah, so you platform? can donate crypto from any crypto wallet or exchange as long as it's not in a sanctioned country. <laughs> that is the one exception. Any uh, donations coming from a sanctioned country, person, account, or anything like that will automatically be rejected. But otherwise, it's um, you know fully flexible. You can donate from any wallet or exchange that allows withdrawals and the ability to send crypto to another account. Excellent. And what amount is listed on the tax receipt letter for a stock donation? Would it be the amount it's worth at the time with the donation, uh, for both or the amount that stock? For? It'll be the value when the donor actually gave it. When it's sold, doesn't impact the donor at all. Um, in both cases, though, with crypto and stock, we're converting them as soon as they come in so that the nonprofit isn't exposed to any volatility risk. So you're essentially, you know, selling at the same time. So the values wouldn't be very different anyway, besides a few seconds. Um, so you don't have to worry about any of that. It's all automatically sold and sent to you in U.S. dollars. So you never actually have to take ownership of the asset. You're just getting U.S. dollars sent to your bank account. Excellent. Now, Zark, I think this is a great one for you. Austin asks, well, it says that they are already a user of the giving block, which is awesome. So can you talk a little bit about the benefits of this integration with DonorBox, why folks can really take advantage of everything that this integration has to offer? Great, yeah. Uh, so, you know, uh, with that, what essentially happens is that all the other platform level capabilities, uh, you know, are also available uh, side by side uh, along with stock and crypto donations. And uh, the CRM functionalities that we're working on, uh, you know, gives you that extra bit of edge where you can essentially uh, have it all in a single platform when it comes to the box along with this integration. So you have the best of both worlds. Yeah. It really streamlines the process. So when yeah. folks are donating, they see all of the options, Google Pay, Apple Pay, Venmo, PayPal, Stocks, Crypto. They don't have to go searching for all these different ways in different areas. It's all in one tidy form. Excellent. Okay. Diane asks, does the accepting org need to have a stock broker or crypto nope. account? This is a, a huge benefit to the way we built this integration. You don't have to worry about having a brokerage account for the stock or a crypto exchange account for the crypto donations. We handle all that, liquidate the funds for you so you don't have to set up all those accounts and go through all that hassle and just send you the cash. Wow, amazing. Yeah. And just to add to what Alex said, you know, uh, we don't even need to uh, worry about fair part altogether. Once, uh, you know, as you sign up with the three pieces of information uh, that you entered while enabling the stock and crypto donations, those were the AAN, the logo, and the address. Uh, you know, at the end of the month, based on that, you simply receive your payouts and checks. Uh, one check for stock donations that you've received uh, at the end of the month, and one check for all the crypto donations that you've received in that particular month. Yep. Wonderful. So I think that answered uh, the next question in the queue was once the organization receives the donation of the crypto or stock, will those funds be um, auto automatically available or when will they get them? So uh, you beat me to it. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Now I see some more coming in here. Let me go ahead and scroll through. Now and maybe you already answered this in um, in the chat, Alex. Older donors often have funds in addition to individual stocks. So assume once mutual funds are added, it will include bonds. Yep, we have stocks. plans to add mutual funds and bonds, but the focus has really been on individual stocks right now. Um, since individual stocks are where you often see the most tax benefits for donating mutual funds, 
and bonds don't appreciate nearly at the same rate as individual stocks or crypto. So it's been less commonly requested, but certainly something we do want to add in the future. Excellent. Thank you for that. Now, I think we're working our way through. Um, and you talked a, a lot about this already, Alex, uh, maybe for folks who jumped in in the middle. Um, I think it will be good to talk about these tax benefits. So how are donors of non-cash given tax write-off value on an asset that changes value? Yep. So surprisingly, the IRS has given guidance on this as early as 2014, even for crypto. Um, and they basically put out rules and, and FAQs around this. But the bottom line is the donor gets a fair market value deduction for crypto or stock when they give the asset. Um, so whatever the value is, when they're sending it to you is the write-off they get. Um, and you're protected from any changes in value because it's being liquidated right away. Um, so it works out great for, for everyone involved. Wonderful. This one just came up from the top. Alan, uh, to simply add the giving block integration to your existing donor box account, you just need to be a pro or premium user. And we actually have a super awesome step-by-step -step guide that will be right there in the bottom left-hand corner of your screen. So that is the little bubble that says accept crypto and stock donations, the step-by-step -step guide. I encourage you to click on that to walk you through the process. And of course, if you have any questions about pro or premium, we do have Amy in the chat that can help you out. And you can always reach out to us at support at donorbox.org. And with these packages, uh, you get a whole slew of incredible benefits. Wonderful. Now, am I missing any questions in the chat? There was um, one Let's I wasn't see. able to see anymore. I was, I was trying to get some, some clarifications. And I think it was Austin who asked it um, about the differences of accepting you know, I think just with us or us and donor box. Um, Austin, if you could maybe email us and send us more info on the particular scenario, it might depend on what kind of package you have and other factors, but in general, it's very complimentary, right? The ideal scenario is that you're working with both of us directly, because like we mentioned, having crypto and stock in your donor box form is going to be the most ideal scenario, right? More donors are going to see it that way. It's going to be easier to find, uh, but depending on how you're working with us outside of that, you know, we might be offering some sort of strategy, consulting, campaign help, other stuff that integrates nicely with all of this. Wonderful. And I see now that comment from Austin. Hey, Austin, nice to see you here. Austin's from um, For the Love of Alex, um, a, yeah. an org that we hold very dear to our hearts. So glad to see you in the chat. Uh, okay, so Robert asks, um, of course, yes, this presentation will be available uh, via YouTube and you will receive the link to the recording uh, email either Monday or Friday. So please keep an eye out for that. Now, I have a couple questions of my own as I am learning this world as well. Um, I am a millennial, uh, but crypto and stocks is, is new to me uh, in a lot of ways. And um, I, I think something that I get hung up on sometimes is like those terms, those terms that I feel like I should know when I'm uh, relaying this to my donors or to my team at my nonprofit. Alex, maybe you can shed a little bit of light on um, maybe acronyms that folks may not recognize or terms that you think should be in any nonprofit fundraisers toolkit, maybe top three things that that we should no know. I'm so you on the spot uh, a couple of good ones one which we always kind of joke about is uh writing bitcoin as one word only the b lowercase we often see bit one word coin a second word or a capital c for coin so that's an easy one bitcoin just capital b the rest lowercase all one word um and another okay. one which you'll probably see a lot especially if you're on twitter is hodl <laughs> so h-o-d-l hodl is basically a typo typo from hold um that just means someone who's basically holding or has crypto a hodler they're holding crypto hodl it's kind of a popular acronym to use it's kind of like a it's kind of a joking way um and third one i think that's important too is i think we use the term nft a lot and often forget how to forget to explain it right so nft stands for non-fungible token i think the best way to think about these is these are digital collectibles 
right? Maybe easy to compare to, let's say, uh, a baseball card, Pokemon card, Beanie Baby, a uh, piece of fine art, right? It's a digital version of these things um, that are sort of digitally owned, digitally provable ownership um, that a lot of younger people are buying and assigning value to. Um, and I think I hear a lot of questions around, I don't understand why they'd be valuable. Why does anyone care about these, right? And it's a lot of this stems from who is owning them and buying them, right? It's this younger generation, exactly. millennials, Gen Z, that are just going more digital for everything, right? So of course that applies to collectibles and art and other things. So even if you might not think it's important or valuable, your donors probably do. And for you in the end, if they wanna give you money, you should make it as easy as possible for them to give you money essentially. <laughs> Excellent, I think that is helpful. And uh, that helps us feel like we're a little bit in, yeah. in, in the know, I love that. Now, one more question for you on my end. I know with online giving or giving in general, there are seasons, right? We've got Giving Tuesday coming up in November. That is a huge day for, for philanthropy. And then we have year-end giving. We know that in the last two days of the year, um, what is it? Something like 30% of giving of the entire year happens in those last two days. Do you find that there are certain seasons for non-cash assets or do you think it's aligned yeah, with general philanthropy? That. Um, I mean, high level, right? Like end of year, certainly most type of time to give non-cash, but I think it's even more true with non-cash than it is with general online giving. And you also reminded me, I forgot to mention earlier, we have an awesome annual report that we put out every year. Um, that looks at you know donations by type of crypto, month, quarter, who the donors are, what trends we're seeing. It's really interesting. But in general, and I'm going to get the number probably slightly wrong, but let's call it roughly 50% of non-cash happens in the fourth quarter of the year. But like I mentioned earlier, this isn't something you can just talk about once a year, right? You need to talk about it all year round because you need to make your donors aware that you actually accept these donations and get them familiar with why they should be donating crypto and stock, because you wanna build that reputation and that brand that you are an innovative nonprofit that takes these assets. Um, so it's not as simple as just mentioning it once every December, you really should accept crypto and stocks all year round and start familiarizing your donors with it year round. So when you get to year end, they already know you take this asset and they're not hearing about it for the first time. Wonderful. Thank you. And for everybody, you probably see it up on your screen. I did launch that annual report um, from the giving block and you can go ahead and click on it and um, gain a whole bunch of insights there. All right. We'll do one more pass through. And again, guys, stick with us for just another minute because I do have that resource for you. Uh, Zark, Alex, any questions that you want to dive deeper into or any parting words before we wrap up today? On my side, session? you know, just thanks for joining. Um, you know, if you want to go into more detail, certainly take a look at the resources we have or go to our website and, and book a demo with one of our teams. Um, if you're not accepting crypto or stock yet, Definitely encourage you to talk to your team about it. Um, it's certainly a huge advantage to be accepting these assets and perfect time of year to be thinking about it too. Um, I mean, we're in September. Now is the time everyone is getting ready for their end of year plans. Perfect time to, to start experimenting for the first time with crypto and stocks. Absolutely. Yeah. And I mean, that's, uh, you know, uh, what, just to add to what Alex said, uh, that's precisely how it is. So the early adopters in this case, uh, you know, will be the ultimate winners. So as Alex mentioned, it's important that you onboard yourself and are prepared for these uh, particular, uh, you know, ecosystem level changes, uh, as I would like to call them. Uh, and I mean, that's about it from my end too. Wonderful. Well, before everyone logs off, as promised, as I've said a million times, we do have a downloadable gift just for you. So I will launch that and you'll see that actually in the right hand side of your screen under the handout section. So you are getting an ebook that outlines how to explain crypto and stock donations to your donors, because this may be uh, new to them, and this will be complete with an email template and communication tips. So as Alex says, communicate, communicate, communicate. This should be a part of your regular fundraising communications plan. So this will be so helpful as you announce your ability to accept these new donation types through your online form. So let me go ahead and launch that handout now. And you, again, will see that in your download section. And uh, that brings us, 
almost perfectly to the top of the hour and to the end of our session. Zark and Alex, thank you so much for your time today and for sharing all of your knowledge with the folks here in the chat. And to everyone who has joined us, thank you for joining us and thank you for all that you do to serve others. We know that you work the work that you do to serve others is incredibly important and we are really proud to be able to offer the tools and resources to support you in that mission. So thanks so much everyone and have a great rest of your day. <music>